This video was brought to you by CuriosityStream. TikTok has blown up over the last couple of years. Sure, the app got off to a strong start, reaching half a billion users by 2019. But it really broke into the mainstream when the pandemic hit at the start of 2020. With people stuck at home looking for distraction and connection, the app exploded to nearly 1.5 billion users as of today. In fact, Cloudflare recently announced that TikTok has beaten out Google to become the world's most popular website. Unsurprisingly then, TikTok's rise has got other big social media sites worried. Instagram and YouTube have both cloned TikTok's scrolling video format with reels and shorts as an attempt to maintain their dominance. It's not just other big tech companies who are worried though. For a while now, people have been raising concerns about TikTok's security, privacy, and ethics. And despite changes from the company, recent news has left some more worried than ever about the platform. So let's unpack what's happening. If this is just anti-China bias, or if TikTok is actually the ultimate propaganda tool. Before we get into the controversy of today, we need to run through a bit of history. Now, while we might all be very familiar with TikTok, founded in 2017, their parent company, ByteDance, actually launched a very similar app a year earlier. This is Douyin, a Chinese word which literally translates to vibrating sound. Now, this app might look very familiar, and that's because Douyin is essentially the Chinese version of TikTok. Now, you might know this already, but due to Chinese restrictions and regulations, the country has its own suite of apps and services, which might look similar to their Western counterparts, but are almost always completely separate enterprises. This one is a little different though, because ByteDance realized they were onto something in China, and rather than just catering to their domestic market, they decided to launch an international version of their app too, TikTok, which they launched in 2017. However, ByteDance were fairly impatient and decided that the best way to boost their new international app was to purchase another one, Musical.ly, another Chinese-owned company who already ran an internationally available and pretty popular app which works in a similar way to TikTok. Anyway, by merging the two, TikTok was able to achieve some strong opening growth, but it was during the pandemic in 2020 that the app really broke into the mainstream. But while I'm sure that was good for the app's bottom line, they likely quickly wished they'd stayed a little more under the radar. President Trump has threatened to ban the Chinese-owned video streaming app TikTok. We're looking at TikTok. We may be banning TikTok. We may be doing some other things or a couple of options. In June 2020, TikTok users claim to have purchased potentially hundreds of thousands of tickets to a Donald Trump rally in Tulsa. Now, this isn't because TikTok is some kind of right-wing mecca like Truth Social or Gab. No, this was a prank attempting to suppress turnout to Trump's rally. A prank which rather seems to have worked. Just a few days later though, on July 7th, US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced that the government was considering blocking TikTok in the US. Coincidence? Well, to be honest, maybe it is. Trump likely did turn on TikTok more due to the Tulsa embarrassment, but the US government had been looking at TikTok for a while by this point. In fact, a year earlier, major think tank, the Peterson Institute for International Economics, warned that TikTok may pose a Huawei-sized problem to national security in the West, a reference to Chinese tech company Huawei, which many concerned countries have been banning for a while now. Now, we'll get into the alleged security and privacy concerns in a moment, but let's continue with our timeline for the minute. Following Pompeo's announcement, Trump signed an executive order at the end of July 2020, requiring ByteDance to divest its ownership of TikTok, with his administration actively assisting companies like Oracle and Microsoft as they considered purchasing the app. Now, ByteDance didn't really like this, with them launching a legal case against Trump and successfully acquiring a preliminary injunction which prevented Trump's proposed TikTok ban. 
Fortunately for TikTok, though, it wasn't long after this that Trump left office anyway, and his successor, Joe Biden, announced in June 2021 that he'd be revoking Trump's executive order, which required TikTok's sale. However, it wasn't all good news for ByteDance, as Biden was also suspicious of the app, with him ordering the Secretary of Commerce to investigate TikTok to determine if it poses a threat to national security. An inquiry which, to the best of our knowledge, is yet to be concluded. So that's a lot of history, but here's the TLDR of the TLDR. TikTok is owned by ByteDance and has a sister app in China. Concerned about security and privacy, Trump attempted to ban the app in the US and forced ByteDance to sell to a US company. This attempt failed and Biden revoked the order, instead calling for an investigation. That means then that not only is TikTok still operational in the US and around the world, but it's also still owned by ByteDance, a Chinese company. So unsurprisingly, concerns about the app persist to this day. The question is then, what are these concerns and are they valid? Well, they ultimately boil down into two categories, propaganda and privacy. <laughs> As a Chinese company, ByteDance is required to follow Chinese national security laws. That includes the China Internet Security Law, a kind of worrying law which can compel companies to hand over data to the Chinese government. And this link to the Chinese state is exacerbated by the fact that the Chinese government also owns a minority share in Beijing ByteDance Technology Co. Limited, a subsidiary of ByteDance. Now, you might not be too worried about this. After all, what can TikTok learn about you just based on your scrolling? But according to Internet 2.0, an Australian US cybersecurity organization, the app collects excessive amounts of information about its users, more than equivalent social media apps, including the collection of contact lists, accessing calendars, scanning hard drives, including external ones, and geolocating devices on an hourly basis. Now, some of these things require the user's active consent, but Internet 2.0 highlights how TikTok is more persistent than other apps when it comes to obtaining this consent, often refusing to take no for an answer and repeatedly haranguing users to grant permission. And let's be honest, a lot of people just tap these boxes to make them go away without really reading them. So it turns out that TikTok might have a lot of information about you. But fortunately, TikTok told a US congressional hearing that they don't give any of this information to the Chinese government, insisting that TikTok's data is actually stored in the US and Singapore, not in China. They also said that TikTok has no association with Beijing ByteDance Technology Co. Limited. But is that true? Well, these claims were called into question in June of this year, when reports emerged that ByteDance employees who worked in China could in fact access US data. And worse still, they regularly access TikTok users' private information. Former employees also told CNBC that boundaries between TikTok and ByteDance were so blurry as to be almost non-existent. So common was this practice that TikTok employees were quoted as saying, everything is seen in China. And one director within the company explained how an engineer in Beijing called the master admin has access to everything. Interestingly too, while the company does have a transparency report which outlines how many government requests the company receives and the proportion they comply with, which is good data to be sharing, China is conspicuously absent from the report. So we have no idea what requests are being received and which requests are being granted. Now, following these complaints, TikTok VP Michael Beckerman clarified that we have never shared information with the Chinese government, nor would we. The problem is, though, that if the data can be accessed from within China, ByteDance wouldn't need to give the Chinese government permission they could be compelled to provide any data that was requested, as was explained by Brian Cunningham, Executive Cybersecurity Director at the University of California, an issue which, when pushed, Beckerman refused to comment on. Now, TikTok has announced that they'll be moving all of their US user data to Oracle-owned servers based in the US, and that all company-owned backups in the US and Singapore will be deleted. Now, that does limit China's ability to access data from the US, 
but it's not totally comprehensive. US Senators Mark Warner and Marco Rubio, the chair and vice chair of the Senate Select Intelligence Committee, commented that since TikTok will ultimately control all access to the cloud-hosted systems, the risk of access to that data by PRC-backed engineers or Chinese Communist Party security services remains significant. Regardless, the shift to Oracle servers is still yet to happen, and it only applies to US-based data. So ultimately, we don't know all of the implications of this just yet. But it does seem that some are still seriously concerned about user privacy. But privacy is just one issue, though. The other is propaganda. At the end of July, things got yet worse for TikTok when reports emerged that the Chinese government had attempted to launch a stealth propaganda campaign on the app. Now, this actually goes all the way back to April 2020, when a colleague emailed Elizabeth Cantor, TikTok's head of government relations, warning her that a Chinese government entity was interested in joining TikTok, but that they wouldn't want to be openly seen as a government account as the main purpose is promoting content to showcase the best side of China, some sort of propaganda. Further messages then go on to show directors at TikTok discussing the request, but ultimately they pushed back, seemingly rejecting this request. Now, while the Chinese state was blocked in this instance, many suggest that they still have a hand in the content which appears on the platform, either directly or indirectly. In fact, you wouldn't even necessarily know if they did play a role in what happened on TikTok. Because despite promises made in March, Chinese state media outlets on the app still aren't labelled as being state media, something which is just standard on other apps. And beyond direct interference, the Australian Strategic Policy Institute alleged that the app often buries or hides words reflecting political movements, including criticism of Vladimir Putin, as well as hashtags related to gender, sexual orientation, or religion in most countries where they operate. And Putin is actually one of many foreign leaders or sensitive figures that were once banned from the platform along with a list of controversial issues that couldn't be discussed, notably including the Republic of Chechnya, Tibet, Taiwan, and Tiananmen Square. Now, TikTok have said that they've revoked this list of banned issues, and that they're now taking a more localized approach. But that's not all that encouraging either. Research from the Washington Post found that very little content about the unrest in Hong Kong was permitted on the platform. Noting that when you searched for Hong Kong on the app, you'd find barely a hint of unrest in sight. Not only that, but TikTok UK's director of public policy actually admitted that this kind of manipulation happens on the app. In a parliamentary committee hearing, she said that TikTok censored content which was critical of the Chinese government in regard to forced labor of Uyghur Muslims in China. Although she did claim that she'd misspoken after the hearing concluded. Now, this sort of behavior will be worrying from any social network, but its connection to China and the influence of the CCP clearly has people more worried than ever. Analysis conducted by Forbes found that at least 300 ByteDance employees previously worked for Chinese state media outlets. And worse, at least 15 simultaneously work for both TikTok and state media outlets. So the connection between propaganda and TikTok is seemingly pretty clear. So maybe by this point in the video, you're a little worried. I certainly am. But what can we do about it? Well, Internet 2.0, the cybersecurity experts that we mentioned earlier in the video, do say that the average user of TikTok isn't facing a major privacy threat. However, there are steps you can take to make sure that you can protect yourself fully. Firstly, make sure that the permissions TikTok has enabled are ones that you're comfortable with. Then you need to manually review this list regularly. As a director of Internet 2.0 told The Guardian, in any update, they can change access to permissions. It's not just set and forget. Also, it's worth not using TikTok for general messaging. If you're just looking to share fun videos with friends, then it's not a major concern. 
But if you're talking to friends about more serious issues, say human rights, sexual orientation, and the like, it's worth being far more cautious. Finally, and this is always true of social media, be very aware of bias and propaganda. The average user might not face serious privacy concerns, but all users, including you, are susceptible to propaganda and misinformation. So keep an eye on the sources and do your own research. Because even subtle propaganda can seep its way into your way of thinking. One way of balancing against this could be checking out the TLDR News YouTube channels, where we offer unbiased news content. Anyway, TikTok's influence seems to be growing yet further, and it's unlikely to go away anytime soon. With the company even exploring taking on Spotify and Apple Music, with the proposed launch of the TikTok streaming service. And we discussed that in a separate video exclusively on Nebula. And in that video, we go deep, explaining why they want to get into streaming and if they're a real threat to the existing players in the industry. And if you're interested, you should really check out Nebula. That's a streaming service that we built with our other creator friends and where you can find exclusive TLDR videos which will never make it to YouTube as well as giving you early access to other videos. For instance, this video was first available on Nebula on August 20th, so you could have watched this ages ago. Not only that, but the Nebula version of this video also didn't have any adverts, not even this one. So if you want early access, entirely exclusive videos, and an ad-free experience, then you can sign up to Nebula for less than $15 a year. Yep, really, it's that cheap. That's because we've done a deal with CuriosityStream. So if you sign up to their superb service, where you'll find tons of high quality documentaries, then you'll also get Nebula, our streaming service, totally free. That means that if you sign up using our link, you'll get both services for just over a dollar a month. Thanks for your support.